So this Q&A panel is with Chris Zaragoza and with John Carmichael, who did stunts for the Transformers movies. Let's give a big TFCon warm welcome, guys. Thank you. How's it going, guys? So, uh, so the way we typically start the Q&As, uh, Chris and John, um, can you tell us how you got started into this career? Uh, maybe what inspired you, and then um, how things have been going, and how long you've been in this uh, in this field? You want to start off? Yeah, that's fine, man. Um, so he did stunt stunts, and then went into stunt coordination for these movies, actually. But I was the stunt driver, so it's a little bit of a different path. Um, mostly, honestly, the way I got started as a stunt driver, I drove like a I don't know, there's like kids around. I drove like an asshole in high school. That's really what it came down to. Um, and I was like, this is fun. Maybe I can get paid for it. So I just started doing that. Um, I, I was a dangerous driver and it kind of worked out. Um, I don't know. I mean, how did you get into stunt stunts? Like, uh, you know, I mean, I, name like Carmichael, you kind of figure I'm the stereotypical, you know, Catholic Irish have eight brothers and sisters, so you have to learn to fight and defend yourself on the regular. So um, I, uh, I kind of started with boxing when I was 13 and worked out uh, at uh, a gym here locally with uh, Winky Wright. He was, he was a middleweight uh, champion for a while. Uh, kind of graduated into uh, mixed martial arts and, and someone happened to be, you know, in the gym. They were, they were scouting for somebody to do some technical work with an actor for a boxing movie. And... You know, I'm like they, they saw me. They, I was right build. I had the right uh, the right kind of technique they were looking for, and um, they called me in, and the rest is history. Yeah, they started offering you money to pay, like to play things. It's the best way to go. I mean, I, I was doing it for free and paying somebody to train me. They were going to offer me a few hundred dollars a day to teach somebody how to look like they could fight. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Um, you know, and, and from then on, it was. Um, I, I started with stunts, and it, it was really, really cool. You know, we, we this was years ago, but prior to prior to getting hurt, it was uh, you know working with the rigging and, and and making sure that you were you landed everything perfectly. That was that was probably the most interesting part because looking at the finished product after it was done was always my favorite part because it was hours and hours and hours of practice and repetition. <laughs> To get it done, so, um, and oddly enough, the injury did not come from a stunt. So, <laughs> fun stuff. Yeah, he's a transformer for real. Yeah, I am. Yeah, literally. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna pass it to you, the audience. You get to decide the direction of the conversation for this panel. Um, now, before uh, I pass it off to you, uh, I do want to kind of throw out a reminder, kind of a disclaimer. Due to the SAG-AFTRA strike, um, unfortunately we can't uh, ask slash answer two specific questions uh, about certain projects that were worked on. We can try to dance around a couple things a little bit, but we can't get too, too specific about that. Um, so anyone who has a question, please feel free to line up right in front of the mic. I'm sure this even qualifies due to what he asked, what he said, excuse me. We'll do our best. All yeah. right, um, a lot of people here know about the accident with the uh, cop car getting hit because he was in the wrong place at the right time. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. The bumblebee car? Yeah. All right. So my question was, were any of you guys part of that drive scene? And if not, what kind of accident have you guys been in that you were like, that could have been so avoidable if just... A little ounce of common sense. So, I mean, if it's done right and set up right, like actually that's what he does now with the coordination is more of the safety stuff. Hmm. Um, it, it's rare that you have real accidents and I mean, you're kind of prepped for it. Um, I'm like a hockey player. I have a missing tooth from, from one because there's like uh, the camera rigging for like over the shoulder shot caught me on the side. That's the worst I've really had happen in a rollover. Um, so that was not terrible. Could definitely have been a lot worse. Um, but like, as long as it's rigged right and everything goes the way it should, you're, there's very low risk. But I mean, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, for me, it was, uh, you know, working in stunts, it's a little more, can be a little more troublesome only because there are so many more things that could potentially go wrong. In a perfect world, everything should work perfectly. The, the rig is set up the way it should be. Everyone's on their mark. They were following the, the, the safety protocols are, are handled. But, uh, you know, I was working on a show, I'm not going to name 
uh, name which one it was, but uh, one of the uh, one of the main actor's stunt doubles actually ended up. Uh, they were doing a scene where he was falling down an elevator shaft, and his rig broke, and he was out for what 30 months. And uh, I mean, it was he he made a full recovery, but I mean that goes to show one bad move, one one miscalculation, and things can go really bad really fast. Uh, do you have a favorite uh, stunt or sequence of stunts? And if you can talk about it, what is it? Right. So, um, I mean, I always like the precision driving stuff personally as far as driving like the, the 180s and stuff. But my favorite thing to, to drive in, let's say you were in a movie, right, where there was big robots running. Um, <clears throat> in that kind of movie, my favorite thing is there's a... Uh, Often there's like, so there's scenes, obviously there's not really big robots running, you know, they CG drop them in, um, but you still want it to look realistic. So there's a, like a big rig truck painted blue so that it can be removed from the shot and then they just drop in, you know, the robot running through so cars are flipping and getting knocked out of the way. I like driving that truck because you get to just blast through crap. Like, you're just knocking cars left and right, it's blowing up. This is how he drives on US-19, yeah, it it's is. totally <laughs> legit. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to drive. Now, and, and, you know, for me, making the transition from actual stunt acting to coordination, um, you know, I, with this, I, I, didn't, I didn't work on the actual stunts. I was, I, like I said, I was more handling safety protocol and kind of uh, making sure everyone's rigs were working. But um, with, with this kind of movie, a lot of it was wire work because you have a lot of, uh, a lot of rigs where there are explosions going in. They have to make that look real. The only way you're going to do that with the proper force is with a proper wire rig. And there was once or twice where we had, uh, we had someone actually leaning out of the car and um, he literally was inches from the ground because, um, you know, that's what the shot required. And so that kind of, uh, that kind of safety, I mean, we've seen it recently with, with other projects where safety protocols weren't fo followed and, you know, things go sideways really bad recently with uh, another project that won't be named. I'm sure you guys know which one I'm talking about. It was a big thing. Um, but... Uh, that's what I mean. Like the, those types of things, those little details that you know, when you're in your 20s and you're and and you're handling your 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 shit, it's like, hey, give me another one. I can I can take the beating, you know. But when when you're responsible for the safety of somebody else, it it changes things. So you know, this guy. Yeah, didn't I just like gotta to worry about me. He has to make me stay looking pretty at the end, you know. And I've, I, obviously, I'm failing. But we're gonna move past that. <laughs> But no, uh, yeah. honestly, the worst part of the job is working with like actor actors because they want like the ones who want to do their own stuff. And I'm like, oh my lord, <laughs> we're professionals. This is what we do, right? So you hired us for a reason. So maybe let us do that instead of like trying to jump in. I uh, I, I had an issue with uh, he's dead now, so I can say it um, with a guy who was in, we'll say, uh, quick and angry movies. The first couple of them, who wanted to do all his own stuff, and I'm like, yeah, man, but you're not. You don't what the hell you're doing, so. <laughs> well, clearly that was the crew. Yeah, um, exactly. But, you know, One of us is toast. Here's the, here's the thing. You could have handled that. <laughs> <laughs> My bad, I'm sorry. I, I, but I'm not bitter about it or anything. <laughs> you could have handled that way better, bud. <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> and, then, and this is why I, I, I studied de-escalation. All right. Uh, so uh, you know, I, tempers can fly, man. Because you know, we, especially when you're doing a fight scene, it's really easy to clock somebody in the face if you're not if you're not yeah. paying attention. If you accident accidentally, you know. 